السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقدوتنا محمد بن عبد الله عليه من ربه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم وبعد Brothers and sisters in Islam I want to tell you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to us the Quran for a specific reason. Some of us think that Quran is a means to scare people in their lives and that life is all about restrictions and everything with everything that's going on we should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a punishment and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought this to us not only as a test but punishing others and so and so and so which basically mean that there, are so, there is so much negative negativity out there. But what I want you to understand is this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also explains in the Quran by saying, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ Now what does this verse tell you? First of all, this verse commands that someone has to be optimistic why so? Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started and commenced on the verse, He immediately told us that definitely and surely, verily, by using the lamb on lanabluwannakum and the noon on lanabluwanna, that noon with, noon, uh, noon with shadda, you see that there, those two elements are used specifically to put emphasis. And when Allah emphasizes on something, then it is bound to happen regardless. And Allah is telling me and you what? That he would try us with a little of khawf, of fear. He mentioned fear, number one, because that is the key to every single problem. Now look at the pandemic that has struck the entire world, which everyone entered into panic mode. Alhamdulillah, up to now, we are free, we are not in jail anymore, well, we are home jailed. But at the same time, if in reality, if you look at it, regardless of what was going on outside, with um, the amount of fear in families and in people, how did you find it? Did you find it as a blessing or did you find it just as a punishment or depending on, on your situation? Because um, some brothers, some brothers say, or some family say, Alhamdulillah, I've been able to spend time with my family. But recently I received a video where someone was really fighting and his wife was beating him up. Literally, his wife was beating him up. And the next thing he says, he says that, I don't know what Corona did, but if this is what Corona brought to me, then I am in total disaster. SubhanAllah, may Allah forbid and safeguard us and our families. However though, looking at the pandemic, we have to understand that that is a test from Allah, number one. Number two, it is bound to happen because Allah will test us without excluding anyone. And among the other tests, what this pandemic came with is what Allah explains in the verse. After saying that he would test us with fear, he knew that everything, everything else would just trickle down. And what are they? First of all, it's hunger. What is hunger caused by? Perhaps it might be caused by the lack of resources. It might be caused by not having a job. It might be caused by you not having, being able to earn for your family, for them to survive. Now look at Yemen today. Despite the fact that they are suffering, but you will still find people staying, remaining, being in a state of optimism. They are full of optimism and they are optimistic. They know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does everything for a very good reason. How about me and you? How about me and you knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely test us regardless of what state we, we will be in. Now, not only that, Allah also explained that he will test us with a reduction, just a little reduce on our wealth. From the wealth that he has provided us with, he will reduce it a little bit to test us how much would we fear. Would we fear that we've lost our wealth or would we 
understand that it's a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also the loss of lives and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard and keep and provide um, a firm speech to those who have passed away from our families from our loved ones from the brothers and sisters the mothers the fathers the young ones the the um the 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 middle-aged ones, those who have been struck with this and um, aff afflicted with this pandemic, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with them always. Amen. Now, when you read the verse, you'll notice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that definitely you will be tried. You will be tried. Now, at the end of the verse, where he proves that we have to be optimistic, is when he said, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ and bear glad tidings to those who are patient. And guess what? As-sabirin over here is given in a form of a noun. All right. And now given in a form of a noun, a verbal noun, explains to us that because nouns are timeless, then they deserve glad tidings of the goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them. Trust me, Allah has prepared for them. Guess what they have? الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Those who will be afflicted with an affliction, what do they say? Indeed, we are Allah's and to Him we will return. أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ Those people are the ones whom upon them is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prayers. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ And those are the guided ones. Allah, Allah. How much mercy is that from Allah? Isn't that clear that we have to be optimistic? Brothers and sisters, life is all about positivity. If you are to look at life in a negative way, you will suffer. All of us will suffer and the world will come to an end. Anything that happens is not the end of the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a better plan for each one of us. If you look at things that way, you will always keep a smile on your face. The next thing is, Never ever and don't you ever lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only in the mercy of Allah, but also in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf alayhi salam explains to his father the dream that he sees, which he does not understand. And his father tells him to do what? To conceal it and not explain it to anyone. Do not disclose your dream to even your brothers. Perhaps shaitan might come in between you guys. What happened is, Ya'qub alayhi salam, because of the extreme love that he had for his son Yusuf alayhi salam, the brothers still envied that type of love which he had, that they afflicted Yusuf alayhi salam by throwing him in the well. While he was being thrown, did Yusuf alayhi salam just yell and... Um, start screaming just because it's the end of his life? No. Despite him being a young boy, he knew that anything that happens, it happens for a reason. And guess what happens next? Jibreel alayhi salam comes to the rescue. He appears as a hero and rescues Yusuf alayhi salam. Now if Yusuf alayhi salam wasn't optimistic and he didn't have the positivity inside him and also if he lost hope, what do you expect would have happened? Perhaps if he will calm down, he would have landed on his feet and that would have at least saved him. If he, he would have been hurt, he would have lost one bone something. But then remember if he panicked and let's say Jibril didn't appear, what would have happened? Perhaps he would have banged his head and gone. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of trying Yusuf, by knowing that Yusuf alayhi salam was calm enough and also was optimistic and positive, Jibreel alayhi salam came to the rescue of Yusuf regardless of the panic mode that he was in. Because obviously even me and you will panic. You being thrown in a world, do you think that's a simple thing? Of course not. 
But Yusuf alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to prove to him something and a lesson for me and you. But then it doesn't stop there. When Yusuf alayhi salam was now missing, not only missing, was found, was um, believed to be dead and he has gone. Um, his father, out of his father, after suffering for a very long time that he even lost his eyes, he commanded his children and told them what? Ya bani yadhhabu fatahassasu mi Yusuf wa akhi Oh my beloved children, please go search for Yusuf alayhi salam and his brother because at the time there was another long story between Yusuf alayhi salam and his brother Binyamin but then the next words that Ya'qub alayhi salam says is وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ and do not despair in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed those, indeed, those who do so, verily and surely, those who do so, to emphasize, Ya'qub alayhi salam emphasizing, they are from the nations of the disbelievers, those who have disbelieved and left Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the ones who lose hope in him. Now, I want you to, under, to ask yourself, where do you stand? And who are you? Where are you right now? In what position are you in life at the moment? Should you really suffer and go through an emotional ups, up, uh, go, an emotional roller coaster? just because your life is really in an in unstable mode at the moment? No. Just learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us definitely. And the next thing, and the next thing is that as Ya'qub alayhi salam told his children to not lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should learn from that. What are the two things that you should do? At the moment, just sit down, evaluate your life and look at the amount of blessings around you that you have more than the things that you've lost, which is causing you instability or causing you to go through problems after problems. Think about the blessings you have. You're still breathing. You're still healthy. You're still with your family. And even if you don't have anyone around, you still have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't there any... Isn't that the most greatest and the most beautiful thing ever? If you have that in your life, if you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically and in particular in your life, then you have everything. Just like when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, was rejected in Ta'if. What happened next? He didn't know if he would be able to return back to what? To Mecca. Because he left Mecca and ran away march all the way all the way to Ta'if thinking perhaps they will accept him but with that severe and intense rejection after throwing stones at him that he bleeded to his he bled to his feet regardless of everything that he went through the next thing the next word that he utters were what if as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his relationship with me is healthy I do not mind I am very much okay how about me and you? Brothers and sisters, how about me and you? The next thing that you should do is always know that whatever happens in your life, there is a better future for you. And above and beyond that is that Allah has a better plan more than the plans that we plan for ourselves. So don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always keep safe, stay with your families and I would say personally, follow the rules of the government because we have a governing body that is governing us for our own safety and that is part of our Islam to follow the rules. And at the same time, try to draw close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last but not least, don't forget to keep that smile on your face. Just like how you're keeping it right now because that is what's going to keep you revived all the time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard all of us and our families from everything that's going on and return back to us the happiness that has 
just perhaps gone and at the same time make everything easy for me and you. Ameen, ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslima kathira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.